Welcome to the Flashmasters podcast. Flashmasters recognizes and celebrates the best flash photography in the world through education, awards, and community. To find out more and to join the Flashmasters community, visit flashmasters.co. Here are your hosts, Helen Williams and Neil Redfern. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 51 of the Flashmasters podcast with me, Neil Redfern. And me, Helen Williams. And as you'll know, if you listen to last week's podcast, we are joined again by the incredible, the inspirational, all the way from Australia, Ben Connolly. Bit of a peek behind the curtain of the podcast. This has all been one conversation, but we didn't want this to be one podcast that was over two hours long. We wanted to cut this into two just to make it easily digestible because everything that we've spoken about has been gold. So we are so pleased and proud to welcome back, even though he's not actually back, it's all been one conversation, on to episode 51, Ben Connolly. Well, thanks very much. It's, it's great to be back again. <laughs> <laughs> we've not moved. We've not moved. It's good to be, it's good to be but back. Ben, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. I say We could talk to you as we're proving for hours. It doesn't matter how long we talk for. We're just like... This is brilliant. This is brilliant. We, as Helen said in, in episode one, we just feel like we're just kneeling at the altar of Ben <laughs> and just learning so much from your words. So, yeah, it's an honor to have you for the first time ever, a guest coming back onto the podcast. So, Ben, I just wanted to, to get into straight away, if that's all right. We spoke on the first podcast about the workshops, about, about how you you know, have, have embraced education within your business. But we forgot to mention that you have, or you've been working on a huge project that since we first spoke to you now, a year ago, you were working on this. And I believe it's almost time to release it. So over to you to announce what this is. So for the last three years of my life, um, I have been working on a online program, which to my knowledge is going to be the most comprehensive online photography program in the world, as far as I know, that I've seen. It's consisting of, I think, 11 modules now. It originally started with sort of five or six, but as I went through and things kind of expanded out, it it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, yeah, it's it's become a kind of an all-consuming monster that has I've, – I've managed to get it done between – in, you know, doing 45, 48 weddings a year and and that sort of stuff. Wow. And pretty much only been in the last sort of two weeks or the last week and a half really that I've put pretty much all my time, everything into it because I'm I'm now at a point where all of the modules are all done. Everything's all finished. I'm just doing some little fine tuning, some some tweaks. There's a couple of companies that have sent me updated information. So I'm sort of just updating all the bits and pieces because obviously it was put together it began three years ago so a lot of the photos that i used three years ago i look back at now and go like what were you thinking mate yeah i can Um, relate to that (laughs) so there's there's a bit of updating and and that sort of stuff that's gone on but the last week it's it's been kind of all consuming because i i now have the finish line in sight and with the program finished i'm just the updates and then i'm just got to sit there and voice record the whole thing and then we're good to go it's one of those things that I've put an incredible amount of time and energy and it is everything I know, everything that I've, that I've learned, that I've picked up over the years, that, that I've been taught, all the systems, all the processes, everything that, that I have kind of going on in my head up to this point is in this program. There's, a, there's an introduction, there's a, a getting started module about, you know, a little bit about mindset and how to how to start a business and and you know the steps basically is a check off list of steps to take for an Australian business to start that. Then we've got the the equipment that you need. Then we've also got the the module. I think it's module three, which is the one that I actually uploaded onto the Flashmasters page, but put that yeah, thank ACBC. You so much for that. <laughs> That's just a, a very cut down module, I guess of a bit of an explanation of the whole thing, but that was something that I'm going to use as a bit of a lead generator just to give away so that people can get a grasp of what's going to be involved in it and then 
you know, look at going further. But that's module three. Then module four is the equipment that you need. Module five is lighting and posing. Six is composition. Seven is flash and creative lighting. Eight is pricing and what to offer. Nine is post-production workflow. Ten is album design and sales. And 11 is the entire business branding, marketing, finding your niche, business structures, business plans, like the whole thing, it's 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 all there. And it's exhausting, I guess, trying to remember it all and 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 get it all out there. But like I said in, in the first podcast, the, the reason I'm doing it is because it, this wasn't around when I was starting and yeah. it was something that I really needed. And um, the reason that I'm, well, I'm going to sell this program over here in Australia for four hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Wow, that's crazy. I know, and so many people have said to me, "Oh, but you could charge thousands and blah blah blah." And, and I'm like, "Well, for those listening, just say that that's about two hundred pounds in in the UK." Yeah, which would mean yeah. that that's wow. what two hundred and sixty, two hundred and seventy dollars in the US. Yeah, something, something like that. Like, I think. Yeah, it's relatively inexpensive, and you know, I've had so many people say to me, "Dude, you, you we've seen what's involved in this. We've seen what you've." gone through to put it together you should be charging thousands and thousands but again it just comes down to the fact that when i needed it i wouldn't have been able to afford thousands and thousands and it wasn't around when i needed it so if i can make it available and make it attainable for people who are just starting out who actually need it then they can start properly and and they can get the education that they need they can go to work, they can do it properly, they can create the systems and, and the processes that will ensure that that hopefully they don't fail. And then hopefully in 20 years time, they'll be the ones that go, do you know what, I need to pass this forward and, oh. and I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to share it with someone else. You know, I hope that it just it works this way forward. It's an amazing thing. I mean, it's in, in different ways. It's amazing that you've managed to do this whilst maintaining such a busy wedding photography business. I don't know how you've done that, literally, logistically, how you've managed to actually find the time. But it's also amazing how you've got to this point. Clearly, your motivator is to help people not to earn as much money as you can because that that is so cheap, so, so cheap for what sounds like everything that you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, hats off. I I just love your passion for helping other people, other photographers and, and driving the industry forward. It's so incredible to see. I kind of like to leave a legacy as opposed to just being one of those photographers that just sells a workshop that doesn't really care, that just appears to make money off the people who need the help. Like I, I, I kind of don't want to be that person. Like I don't want to, I don't want to appear to anyone. I don't really, I don't, I don't care what people think because I'm, I'm at that point in my life where I'm, I'm good with how I am and who I am, and I don't care what people think. But at the same time, I don't want to be perceived as one of these, another one of these photographers that just hocks their wares and just sells programs to people and and does it because they're in it for the money. Yes. Money is important and making a lifestyle is important. And, you know, I'm a big believer in money can't buy happiness, but everybody's trying to find out for themselves. But, you know, at, at the same time, I, in doing this and in, and if, if I can reach the amount of people that I hope to reach by doing this, then the money, the return on investment will come back. Of course. And it may not be in a monetary sense. It may be in a legacy sense, but... You know, if if you get five thousand people buy this at four hundred and ninety seven dollars, then I've helped five thousand people and I've made a nice income and I've looked after myself from it as well. If I only sell it to a hundred people and it helps a hundred people, then you know what? I've I've left a legacy and I've helped someone and they'll pay it forward later on. But I just I don't want to be one of these photographers that appears so unattainable to everyone and the the people out there who you you can't call them you you send them an email they never reply because you feel like you're just not important enough yes yeah. they're at they're at this level you perceive yourself to be at this level and they've got so much that they can share and you want so much information and and help from them but they feel like they're just unattainable or unreachable or uncontactable or something like that and i just 
I don't want to fucking be that person. You're definitely not, Ben. Anybody who listens to you for five minutes knows that you're not that person. Yeah. No, not at all. So, yeah, it sounds amazing. So, uh, and wait, so where are you actually up to now? And do you have like a, a timeline in terms of when it may be released? So, yeah, everything's finished. And, and there's just been a few companies that have come on board that have made me an ambassador or made me one of their one of their their team or whatever and and so Amazing. I'm incorporating you know those companies in 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 different ways um giving them their own sections in in each module so you know there's been a little bit of of adding things in but you know there's yeah. there's some incredible companies that that have given me their information and and given me discount codes and and you know a lot of insight and stuff like Companies like Profoto, Azo, the the company that make those amazing monitors, you know, Graphy Studio in Italy, Fundy have put in a lot. Um, I use an AI retouching company called uh, Retouch for Me, um, which is really cool, and they've brought me on board as a, as one of their ambassadors, and you know, have let me use their product free of charge, which which is amazing. And so, you know, I've just I've added people like that into the program because it's. They're, they're companies that I personally use that I know that I can recommend that I know that you press go on what they do and it just works. And that means so much, doesn't it, to know that you're actually using them. Yeah, yeah. And when they save me so much time and they increase the quality of my life and my lifestyle, then who am I not to share them with the people who I feel I can help? So do we have a date though? When when can people oh, get you're their hands you're on this? Bend down. I went steaming across the flat then on some other tangent. Um, I'm hoping to have it done audio recorded. So it's in PDF format at, at the moment. I've, I've got to sit there, play it on the computer and voice over the whole thing as I play through it so I can record audio and video so I can provide oh. a, a PDF version, an audio version and an audio visual version. So that's going to be the next big thing. I was going to get AI to do that, but let's face it, AI is not going to sound as mental as what I do. So I think <laughs> you, could have had, you could have asked AI to do like a famous voice voice over it. I think it kind of needs to be my voice. So I'm going to do that. And then, you know, once it's all put together, then hopefully I may be able to, to ship it off to Audible or something like that afterwards in, in audio form. But that's brilliant. I've never heard of any course doing that before. Yeah, so that's the plan. And hopefully I want to have that done. I'd like to have that done by the end of October so that we can hit go probably very early in the new year. So I, I kind of want to try to catch people right at the beginning of the year when they've gone, right, our New Year's resolution, which I think is bullshit, but anyway, New Year's resolution, yeah. we're going to try something, <laughs> we're going to stick our head out, we're going to take a risk, we're going to take this full time, we're going to do whatever. And I kind of want to... I want to sort of put it out then because I think it towards the end of the year, people are winding down. They're looking forward to Christmas. They don't want to start anything new. And, you know, very early next year to kick off, I think is the way to go. But the, the aim is to have it done by October so that, you know, at the end of the year, I can have a bit of a break, come to see you guys in the UK for the workshop and, and bring it with yeah. me to, to give to everyone who's a participant of the workshop. Go home for Christmas and then, you know, do the Cosmos Awards in Malaysia in February, WPPI in March and feel refreshed, hopefully, when that's all happening. So in, in a very short answer, Helen, hopefully October, um, <laughs> worst, case, worst case beginning of November. Good stuff. I Brilliant. love the thought. I love the idea that you're doing like an audio version because you're so inspired. We've said it so many times, but you're so inspirational to listen to. And I just love the thought of driving to a wedding with like the chapter on mindset playing in the car. Yeah. And yet you, you're going to like feel 10 foot tall when you walk into that into that bridal prep room thinking I'm going to absolutely smash this with your words like ringing in your head. That's so cool to have that version. And maybe going back to our, the, the, crazy Australian guest questions that I gave you. Like I, one of my phobias, I just thinking about it would be sounding like that guy that just talks like a monotone voice like this. And after half an hour, you want to shoot yourself in the face. <laughs> yeah. like, that, I don't want to be that guy. So I've got to really make sure that when I'm recording this, I'm, I'm bringing in the energy and, and, you know, up and down and, and steaming in, steaming out and like just, just <laughs> doing that. So yeah, I've kind of, I've got to, Keep that going, not monotone anything. So I guess that's a bit of a fear of mine, I guess. But you've got you've got a very yeah. good voice to listen to. I wouldn't worry about that. 
got a head for radio here. So you won't sound <laughs> like Neil and his you first like your YouTube videos. That's not going to happen. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, everyone. In today's video, I'm going to talk about... Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about how you can create a reflection with your phone. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you'll be way better than that. That's probably just a bit of an inexperience, like too. I, oh no, it was, it was. I was like a little rabbit in the headlights. Yeah, you just mentioned there, Ben, the questions that you asked us. So with the magic of technology, oh, here they are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that I want to throw something in that you would have never done before. And if you like it, then maybe you can carry it on. If you don't, yeah, okay. If you don't, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but if you do, like maybe you can carry it on, but maybe just a cut down version. It's up to you. But I thought you're gonna fire a whole lot of questions at me and 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 I'm gonna I'm just gonna be me. I'm gonna be the idiot that I am. So I wanna fire a few questions at you. Go for <laughs> it. So I've got the crazy Australians guest questions. So I'm blushing want, before we start. <laughs> if you want, you can both answer them. I'll let Helen decide that when she sees it. Here's a question. You can both <laughs> you can both answer if you want. And if you want to throw it back to me, I'll answer a question. I'll answer the same one as well. So we'll if you want, we can go around the circle. So love it. So first question to the both of you: What's your favorite alcoholic drink? Prosecco. JD and Coke. <laughs> Like an, it's not yeah. snap, like not not both at once. <laughs> oh, <see. laughs> JD, and Coke, JD and Coke for me. Helen's ninety nine percent prosecco. Her blood yes. is prosecco. Prosecco and what what she bleeds prosecco. What was yours? JD Jack Daniels and Coke. Jack Daniels and Coke. Right. Yeah, which I I know to a whiskey man like yourself, he's probably swearing. No, like I do need the Coke. Jack Daniels, yeah, you need it with Jack Cola. Daniels because it's cat's piss. Um, <laughs> so, so do you want to know my answer? Yeah. Yes. So, oh, although so, I think we, oh, is it McCracken whiskey or something? Oh, God, no. Oh. Jesus. Have I got that wrong? No, it's, it's McCallan, but no, that's not. McCallan, it. yeah. <laughs> so, Cracken my, is rum. My favourite alcoholic drink would have to be one of my espresso martinis. Oh, oh your own recipe. Yes. I, I do dabble in a bit of our, in a bit of cocktail making. So when you come Good to, to Australia, November. don't expect I'll have a bottle of prosecco for you in the fridge, but expect some cocktails and expect yes. to be wanked after like three or four. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, we'll hold you to this. Radio. So next question: Any phobias? What's your phobias? I have a really weird one. Uh, I do, I do have like the normal ones. Like I find as I'm getting older, heights are an issue for me. Yep. Yeah, and I didn't used to have that when I was younger. I won't say it's a phobia because it's it's not like it impacts on me. In terms of like the weirdest one though, and even thinking about it now, where you go, it's people brushing the teeth in front of me, and also weirdly sponges, and that's be that sponges is like you know the, what you use in a bath. Because when I was younger, and even talk about it now, I'm getting goosebumps. It literally, when I was younger, I I went into the dentist, and for some reason. I don't know what was going on, but I needed to have a sponge put into my mouth and I hated it so much. I was crying. And even if I think about putting a sponge on my skin, it makes me go, oh, no, it's, it's, <laughs> wow. I'll never get over it. So, yeah, a lot of normal ones, but that is one that is a bit more unusual, but it's very real. And, yeah, if, if I see Helen brushing her teeth, like, or if she's on TV, anybody brushing her teeth, I'm like, oh, no. And I don't know why that is, but... I can't do it. Well, okay. <laughs> Helen? There you go. What's your... That's a good question. Mine, I, I'm even struggling. Like, it's the bog standard, like, really don't like spiders. But that sounds really boring. But like, I don't even know if this... Yeah. It's still, my biggest fear is just letting people down or disappointing people. And that's just, like, oh. not very fun, is it? Like, yeah, the thought of letting someone down or doing something wrong. Um, so, yeah, for the I'm purposes of the podcast, making... though, Helen, isn't... I thought custard was yours. It's... You really don't like custard, do you? No. But then, to be fair, we've had some posh custard. Oh, yeah. Oh, t oh touching jam. Oh, there you the go, jam. Touching Touch jam. It, they, so you say spider, but then touching jam. <laughs> Oh, why are you touching the jam? Don't, like, well, spreading jam. Jam is like, no, I'm not a fan of jam. So, you know, jam is much more, much more fun and less deep of going. My biggest fear is letting other people down. Just, just touching jam. Touching jam. Touching jam. <laughs> right. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to leave all <laughs> down. Like I, I don't really kind of have any phobias as such. I'm not scared of snakes or spiders. Or, I suppose you and, can't uh, be. Probably my, my biggest fear would, well, I guess, would be potentially being homeless. That would be a harrowing experience, I reckon. And But I wouldn't say it's a phobia of mine, but it's it's one of those things that that I would thankfully now I, I feel like I never have to worry about that but it, it it would be something that would be just terrifying yeah because that that then is the start of lots of other issues isn't it people yeah. you know your health would go oh it's it will be yeah it's awful yeah Jeez. uh so next question favorite meal to cook to cook oh. or to eat to cook for me I'm gonna say, we started ordering Hello Fresh. Do you have Hello Fresh, yep. Ben, in Australia? Yeah, we started getting those, and I've now started to tweak them a little bit. And I made one last night. I was like, oh, actually, I'm pretty impressed with it. Admittedly, it's just Hello Fresh recipe, but it's really easy. I'm not a fan of cooking. So anything that's easy is what I'll always go for. But with Hello Fresh, it's made me realize even though it's easy, it tastes amazing. And now I actually prefer it to a like the, the Chinese to Asian ones that we have, yeah. I think even nicer than the takeaway. So, yeah, I'm going to say that. It's usually yeah. something the name with that. noodles and beef it's, and it's teriyaki sauce. It's basically noodles, teriyaki sauce, beef, <laughs> salt, peanuts on the top. That is a taste sensation. That's a revelation. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm going to say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good advert for them. They can sponsor the podcast if they're listening. Yeah. They won't. Yeah. They're not listening. <laughs> yeah. send, us some, send us some boxes, please. I know mine <laughs> as well. And mine's going to be a roast dinner, typical UK roast. But the, the, the reason I really enjoy cooking them is because it takes so long. And it just seems to be the law that if I cook a roast, I can drink a bottle of red wine whilst doing it. because it takes so long that's kind of like my activity for the day so it's kind of like a chill out time so yeah as soon as i start or about to start prepping the veg you have to pour red wine but like i said it's quite a long process to put together a full roast so i basically get drunk whilst i'm making it and uh, it's kind of all consuming like getting all the timings right so for me who i do a million different tasks at once and I can't focus. I do actually focus a bit whilst I'm I'm making that. Plus, I have yeah. nice wine. So yeah, a roast for me. Right. What's yours, Ben? Are you a cook, Ben? I, I I dabble a little bit, but I I'm more of a barbecue guy. So my favourite meal to cook would be a nice big thick fillet steak with with veggies. Nice. Chuck yeah. it on the barbie, mate. Yep. Chuck it on the barbie. Yeah. We could probably barbecue about three days a year in the UK. So yeah, <laughs> I, I use mine every night. Like it's on my balcony, and I just step outside, oh. throw a bit of steak on, and away you go every night. You're a stone throw from the beach. You've got your barbie on the go every night. Yep. We need to go to Australia. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> Let's go to the GC. So next question: What's the best advice you've ever been given? Oh, oh. do you know a quick answer for this, Helen? No. Um. Let me think. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, but it's not advice I've been given, but it's just treat others how you want to be treated. I think if everybody in the world did that, that would solve so many issues. But I wasn't given that as such. Obviously, everybody's aware of that. See, I'd love to be able to have an answer like yours, Ben, where you mentioned like your dad has said something. Nothing against my dad. He's never given me any any wisdom (laughs) like that. (laughs) He's never sat me down and said, son. And it's been like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, it's not, that's never happened. Yeah. What about you, Helen? I'm like, always wear clean knickers. No. <laughs> I'm talking about, again, that some that I can attribute to someone that I know. And you say, you know, you I, I would love to have an answer where I say, this person said this at this time, and it really changed the way that I look at life. And, and I'll be honest, I, if somebody has, it's it's not been good enough to stick in my mind. I, I have. I've been to a lot of seminars and workshops and that sort of stuff in, in my life with people like Richard Branson and and other other big business people here in Australia and that sort of stuff and whenever I get the opportunity if I if I get the opportunity to speak to them afterwards or or anything like that I've always got one question that I always ask one, that one question is if you walked out of here right now ran into a 18 year old version of yourself what advice would you give yourself knowing what you know now And do you know what the really batshit crazy thing is? Go on. Of the five or six people that I've asked that question to, I think there's there's been six people I've asked that question to, quite big names. 
worldwide. Four of them have said... Before we hear what that is... Finish. No, I wanted to say what ours was because it, I just thought, is there any chance that ours would be the same? And oh, I didn't okay. want Ben to give us that answer. Right, okay. What would your advice be then, Helen? I love this as a question. In fact, every time we have a podcast guest on now, I think this is the, the, a great closing question. So thank you, Ben, for this. What advice would you give to an 18-year-old? I mean, I'm only going back two years to go to that stage, obviously. So <laughs> uh, uh, no, for me, it would be what I want to have tattooed on, on my arm. No, I really just want to have the words, you are enough. And I know it's cliche or it sounds like, you know, the live, laugh, love that you have on the walls and, you know, people take the piss out of. But yeah, I'm someone who's just insanely hard on myself. And I think I've made my life so much more difficult because I have this underlying feeling that I'm not. And as I'm getting older and I'm understanding more about sort of, you know, my upbringing and understanding more about different traumatic experiences that I've been through understanding more about ADHD, which I know you you know about, Ben. I'm someone who is inherently, and I used to describe myself as the most down, happy person you'd ever meet and didn't quite understand why. And I think a lot of people take my energy as, under, as thinking I'm someone who's constantly someone who's happy. But underneath that, I'm someone who's so self-critical mm. of, of every little thing that I do. And now as I'm becoming a, you know, a lot more self-aware and understanding... That that self-criticism and that low self-esteem is something that's so entwined in ADHD as well. And getting to know myself better, I would just want to tell myself that I am enough because I'm someone who works myself to burn out, someone who constantly needs to feel like I'm the absolute best and chasing sort of recognition and for someone to say, Helen, you're good or like what you do is good. Even though when people tell me that, I don't believe it and I think they're just being kind. But I think the overriding thing for me that I'd still need to work on and really understand and believe, and maybe if I had this from a younger age, I'd, I'd be sort of further along, is that I'm enough and what I do every day is enough. And as long as I'm trying to be a good person, then that is enough. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answers. <laughs> you know what's funny? Like when you're a kid, you don't care what people think. And then when you're in your 20s and 30s, all you can think about is what people think of you. When you get to your 40s and 50s, you don't care what people think about you. And then when you get to your yeah. 60s and 70s, you realise that people weren't fucking thinking about you anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so so true. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. I, I just think that, and your answer is brilliant, Helen. It's a great answer. Mine would would be to, to not, to basically, it's, again, it's been said before. It's not a, a new thing, this, but to find out what it is you love and just do that. And I think that, especially in the UK, maybe it's different in other countries, I don't know, but there is just this societal expectation that there is a path and an order that you do things in and you need to get a safe job. You stay in that job and, you, you know, if there's anything that you enjoy outside of that, well, that's just like a hobby. You know, you, you, you do that, but that can't replace your job. Mm. And I would always say, like, if you can find something that you love doing, put everything into that, create a business out of that, that should be what you do. And you don't have to be taking the safe route all the time. I and mean, what we do is, is crazy as a job. You know, like it, we're talking to you now and this is like our job. And that's come about through taking risks. And all, of, you know, everybody who's self-employed takes a risk. But I think especially doing what we, we do here is, is like that. And I wish I would have done it sooner. Uh, so I would just say, you know, if you've got a passion for something, build your life around that passion. Don't let it just remain a hobby. Because you can, whatever it is, there will be a way of doing that. But you have to go against the societal expectations sometimes if you're to do that. And that's not easy. You know, we are always taught, you know, especially over here, it would be you go to school, you go to college, you go to university, you then try and save up to buy a house. You need a job to do that. You need a nine to five to do that. You buy that house. And it's it, everyone's taking the same path. But that doesn't mean it's the right path for each person. It doesn't mean it's going to make them happy. Mm. So if something else makes you happy and you've got a real passion for that, then find a way to make that the basis of your life, I would say. Yeah. Aww. You can you can fail doing something you hate, so you might as well do something that you like. Exactly. And it is the same, you know, that what I said earlier is so true, that if you do find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. We if Helen and I, like what we've been through the past year, and you'll know all about this, how many weddings you've shot as well, Ben, like, especially with trying to build flash masters in our busiest ever year, alongside everything else that we were doing as well. Like if, if you 
don't have a love for doing that and this passion to make it grow, there's no way we would have carried it on through. But it we did because we were able to work nonstop, like every waking hour, because we loved it. Yeah. Deep down, we loved what we do. And that's what carried us through. If we didn't, we would not be here now. No. Great question. What's yours, Ben? I mean, you've already given so much good advice, but... And then, then I'd love to know what, what this common answer is. So four out of out of the six people that I've asked that question to don't know or obviously know each other, but they weren't asked all at once. So, And they were asked over different time periods, over 10, 15 years. They said, find one thing, do that, be the best at that, and then move on to the next thing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Very much the don't try to juggle everything. Do one yeah. thing and do it really well, master it, and then move on to the next thing. I am shaking my head going, I can't. There's no way I could do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I saw there's so many different memes that come up on my Facebook, and there's one particular guy with ADHD who always comes up, and he's got a range of merch, and he was wearing a T-shirt the other day, and I was like, oh, my God, this speaks to me so much. And all I had on was side quests. And I was like, oh, my God, that's me every single day. At every moment, I'll go to do something, start five other things, and then complete none of them. So the thought of being able to be, like, really going to focus on one thing, I have no idea how I would do that. I love the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not sure my brain could do that. Did, did I <laughs> tell that's you my that... one thing is, is being good at side quests. <laughs> did, did I tell you the ADHD joke? No. How many ADHD kids does it take to change a light bulb? Do you want to go swimming? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think, yeah, Neil has just been, when we first got together, was so many times like, what are you talking about? And we're halfway through a conversation. My head's moved to the next one. I don't tell him. And then I just start on something totally new. And the amount of times, yeah, he's been like, what? Like, wh when did we start talking about this, Alan? I'm like, oh. <laughs> I just had the conversation in my head. There's there's a couple more. Have we got time for a couple more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is the fast money series, right? We've got the, a few of the normal questions. Now we're on the fast money questions, right? First thing that comes to mind, quick answers. What's your pet hate? Ego. Yep. This is going to be really weird. Sniffling. What is it? What was that? Sorry, Helen. <laughs> Zoom, Zoom just went a bit funny then. Oh, it, uh, mine would randomly be sniffling. People sniffling. who sniffle. Yeah. Neil, the, yeah, Neil the other night just randomly sneezed in bed and afterwards was like, and I was like, blow your nose. I've never wanted to cause physical harm to this man, but there is something about sniffling that really gets me, gets me angry. <laughs> so, so my pet hate is kitchen sinks is the tap on the kitchen sink. When you turn the tap on and it hits the, hits the bottom and it sprays up everywhere and you're constantly wiping the bench. The amount of yes. times I've almost torn a fucking tap off and thrown it across the flat, like it is just there. Yeah, that's my pet hate. Next question. So, if you, if you could have three people, anyone over for dinner, who would they be? Oh, I've thought about this a few times because I listened to a podcast and they asked this question. Helen, do you want do you want to go first or? Oh, I'm sure we did this on a previous podcast. Didn't yeah. We? Who did we say? I don't even know. I'd have to go back through my thing because I thought about that for quite some time. But I think we asked each other on Getting to Know Us episodes. I oh, don't no, we know. did. We did because your your grand was one. Yeah, I wanted my nan. And she was flirting with so Who was she flirting with? Thor. Thor, oh, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, so at my dinner party, Chris Hemsworth has to be there because he's like the ultimate. Oh, he's, he's, after he's, Neil Redfern, my biggest crush is Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, Chris Hemsworth, oh, dear Lord. The things I would do to that man. So, yeah, can I just have Chris Hemsworth? He's quite big. He takes up two seats. And I'd yeah. have my nan there because I think she'd have a nice time flirting with him. And um, and you had yeah. David Attenborough. Oh, David Attenborough, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I like right. animals and I think he'd be really interesting to talk to. Right on. Neil? Mine would be... I'm trying to think what would actually work as a dinner party, basically, uh, as well. Mine would probably be... See, I wouldn't have Ricky Gervais. I think he's funny. I think he's he's also a brilliant philosopher as well. I've listened to him on many podcasts where he told me a bit, a bit more serious, and I, I just love him. Yeah. But to get the best out of Ricky Gervais, I'd also probably want Carl Pilkinson there as well. 
I don't know if you, if you, this probably doesn't mean anything to you, Ben. No, I don't know. I won't go all into it, but people who are aware, like Ricky Tavares used to do a, a radio show on a station called XFM over here in the UK. This is how he first sort of made his name. He then had a producer on that radio show called Carl Pilkinson. He wasn't on the show. He was just pressing buttons in the back. But he's like the most interesting buffoon idiot, basically, you could ever come across. And he started talking to him on the show. And he was just like, Ricky Drace wanted to pick his mind all the time. And so many funny things came out of it. So it's almost like to get the best out of Ricky Gervais, I'd want Carl there. And then Alex Ferguson, manager of football team I support. Yep. Yeah, him there as well. It's a very weird mix. I know I should be saying things like, you know, Jesus Christ and other people, <laughs> but realistically. Anyway, let's But in a way, Ferguson being there is actually inviting Jesus, so it sort of works. <laughs> <laughs> Who's yours, Ben? Um, I would have Robin Williams. Aww. Cool, good answer. I would have Richard Branson, and Ooh. I would have my dear grandfather. Oh. How, how would that work as a dynamic? Like, what was your granddad like? I, I don't know. Robin Williams would tear the place up. I'd get a lot of <laughs> really insightful stuff from Richard Branson, and then I could just sit there and share it and, and have that moment with my grandfather again. So that'd, that'd be, yeah, that'd be mine. Beautiful answer. Wildest wedding story. Oh, I am rubbish at this because Me I've never too. got a good go-to. What's yours, Ben, while we're thinking? All right. So years and years ago when I was doing video, I rocked up at a house for a a wedding. The bride was an older lady in her late 50s. She had three bridesmaids there that were in their late 50s, early 60s. I'm wearing all black, dressed fairly well, rocked up at the door, knocked on the door, and I heard this gaggle of hyenas come running to the door. As they've opened the door, the oldest one has gone, has looked at me up and down, turned her head back to the rest of them and gone, the stripper's here. <laughs> <laughs> so you obviously had to strip? No, fuck no. So needless, oh, but- needless to say, I went in there and continued and, and started my job. And I can tell you there is no one on this planet more sexually inappropriate than <laughs> late 50s, <laughs> early 60s ladies. <laughs> I, I can't was- wait. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting pats on the ass. I was getting cheeky looks. I was getting winks. And then it got to a point where one of the bridesmaids had gotten dressed and she was wearing a silk or a, a clingy kind of dress and the dress was sticking to her from, from static. You know how you get static in the dress sticks? Yeah. Two ways to get around that. You can either use powder, put a powder on their legs and, and it doesn't stick, or you can use a moisturiser. And again, it doesn't stick. So I've gone to, she's gone, how do I get this to stop sticking? And I've gone, well, have you got some talcum powder? Like, because talcum powder will work. And the same lady who yelled out the strippers here has swung around in her chair and gone, powder, is there a bottom to be dusted? (laughs) (laughs) And I just went, fuck, get eject, get me out of here. (laughs) It was sexual innuendos all day and they were all in their early 60s and I was like 28 or something like that and it was, um, yeah. Last two, last two. Have you ever been arrested? No. No. No, I have met, I have many photos of me like very drunk, like placing myself over the hoods of police cars. <laughs> and I've been in the back of a riot van. I have been in the back of a riot van, but I wasn't being naughty. That was me once again being drunk playing hell with the police officers. And for whatever reason, they let me go in the back of the riot van and I managed to watch like all the CCTV over the city. So yeah, I've I've had many run-ins with the police whilst very, you know, intoxicated, but they seem to think that I'm harmless fun. So thankfully not, no. (laughs) I've been stopped a few times by the police. Oh. uh, Including... Including oh, only on uh, when driving, including one actually on the way to a wedding. I was not long after moving house. I was driving to a wedding, and uh, and I hate the police when they're behind you. You just feel I feel really, really nervous. I remember just coming off, and then the, he came off as well. It's like, oh no, and then, then you're going down a country you. lane. He's still behind me, and then the lights come on. It's like, oh god, what have I done? And even though I've done nothing wrong, I still feel like oh what's what's happened? And he pulled over and said, oh do you know why I've stopped you? No, and um, he said I'll let you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he I said, "Do that. you have any? Ins- do you have insurance?" I said, "Yes." 
unbeknownst to me, I now know that if, if a police car's ever behind you, they've got like number plate recognition cameras that are then doing scans on your car and stuff. He said, he, he, he doesn't look like you do. I, I said, I, I promise you I do. Who's it with? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, what had happened is when I'd moved house, I'd phoned up to update the details with the insurance company and they inputted my registration number one digit wrong. Oh. It was all fine. Thankfully, I was on the way to bridal prep, so not a ceremony. But I said, I, I know that, you know, I, you're not going to let me go, but I, I am actually on my way to a wedding. I'm a wedding photographer. And it was like, well, you can't, if, if you've not got insurance, you're not, we I'm not going to let you drive on. So it was, oh, God. Anyway, it was all sorted out. He was brilliant. And then, then his whole demeanor changed from being someone who was a bit like, you know, you are guilty to, we'll get this all sorted out, don't worry. And I did say to him, like, Oh, I was really worried then, thinking if I'm not allowed to drive, I can't. How am I going to get to the venue? He said, "Don't worry. If we, if I would have, we didn't sort it out, I would have driven you there." I was just imagine turning up to a wedding in a police car. <laughs> like it would have looked ridiculous. But no, I've never actually been arrested. Just stopped. Have you been arrested, Ben? It sounds like it's a loaded question. I love Helen's story. Helen's tearing the place up, but don't worry, she's just harmless fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been arrested, but I I have been. Um, I, I got quite lippy with a police officer because they pissed me off and I said, it's no wonder people fucking shoot you guys. Um, and <laughs> that didn't go down well. What a surprise. So I was bundled up against the van with my hands behind my back, but they eventually let me go. But no, I've, I haven't been arrested. So, yes, I've, I've, <laughs> I've learnt better than to get lippy with them. So, yes. Yeah, um, whereas they allow me to steal their hat. And, uh, and and run off or start doing cartwheels in front of police horses whilst drunk. Like, whatever. I just get away with it. <laughs> it's more just harmless fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So, last question. Are aliens real? Yes. I don't know what my answer is. I think it's so ridiculously short-sighted to think that we are the only living species in in the i mean how big is the universe it's it's we can't even get our heads around it it would be ridiculous to say that we're the so i don't believe in like a little et type alien figure just coming down and like walking around and stuff but there's definitely aliens out there yeah. there's definitely ufos out there that is um, a good explanation neil so i'm going with what you said Okay, that's <laughs> oh, what he's having. Yeah, what he says. So thank you so much for those questions for us. I hope we passed. It's really good questions, and we will incorporate some of those into, into the questions that we ask future guests. So just to finish off the podcast, Ben, and this has been amazing. Thank you so much. For anybody listening who is maybe just starting out in wedding photography, sorry, I'm just saying that. Helen's just yawning. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody listening, sorry, keeping sorry. you up. <laughs> For anybody listening, Ben, who is starting out in wedding photography, what would be your biggest one or two piece of advice that you would give to them? You know, you're an amazing educator. You've got so much experience. If you delve back into that experience, what are the, two, the one or two things you think, yes, this is what I'd pass on? The first thing, the first piece of advice that I would give is to invest in yourself and invest in your education as opposed to spending everything you have investing in gear and equipment. Yes, that's brilliant. That would be the first piece of advice. There is such a tendency, isn't it, for people to look at training and look at the cost and think, oh, I'm not doing that. And then they'll go out and buy the latest camera for three, four grand. And it makes no sense. Gas, as we call it, like gear acquisition syndrome. Yeah. And, and see, if, if they focus on their education, they're going to seek out the people, the mentors that are going to, that fit with them, that are going to take them to where they want to go and they'll seek those people out. Whereas if you're just going down to your local camera store and buying the best camera and hoping for the best, then are you really growing as a human? Because a mentor or, or seeking out the education means that you're growing as a human, whereas just buying gear means you're just accumulating shit. Love that. It's so true as well. Yeah. I think early in my career, I was guilty of that as well because I always wanted like new stuff. But it was only when I started attending workshops myself, I, I feel like I actually started getting better as a photographer. Yeah. The next piece of advice, and I think probably just as important as the first part, is don't compete with other photographers. Don't be a competitor in, and like this, this sounds very Simon Sinek kind of, kind of thing, but 
don't be the competitor competing with everyone else for the same resources and and the same outcome because by doing that you're just comparing yourself to the person next to you and whatever you're comparing yourself to the person next to you you're judging yourself and you're highlighting your flaws you're really becoming aware of your flaws by doing that whereas instead of looking down the road and going, well, they've got 25 weddings and they're doing better than me and I've only got 10, you know, I'm a failure and blah, 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 because that's where your brain will go. I would give you the advice of look in the mirror and compete with that person and be better than you were yesterday. Book more weddings than you did, book more weddings this year than you did last year and be the infinite player and do what you do to keep going and to to prolong your existence and and your gift and and that sort of stuff instead of trying to compete with with everyone else until you run out of the will or resources to carry on brilliant i applaud that ben thank you so so much i know you say we say thank you a lot but this is so deserving i I just hope you understand just how inspirational you are to listen to and we are so grateful to have you not just on the podcast not just on the streams but just in the flash masters community helping so many of us self and helen definitely included to to look at life even in, in a in a different way and to to learn and grow and we've done that so much from listening to you so thank you so much for your time it's been amazing if you'd like to find out more about ben the links to all Ben's socials and his workshop will be in the description of this podcast. And if you'd like to join us in the Flashmasters community, you can do so at flashmasters.co. But Ben, thank you again from Helen and from me and from all of our listeners. You've been amazing. Not just on the first episode, but on this one as well. We've never done a two-parter before and we could probably do three and four parts. Yeah, we could you go on, on so. for hours. <laughs> exactly yeah so ben thank you so so much we're really grateful that's all right my pleasure and thank you to you guys it's it's incredibly hard to get to reach people and to to touch people and and to affect change in their lives without a platform to do it and and it's it's getting increasingly harder with social media and everything now to get a platform that people will actually listen to and and relate to and that sort of stuff and Thank you to you guys and congratulations to you guys for creating that platform and creating the community that you have because, man, this is one of the best communities of photographers that I've ever seen in, you know, my whole career. So you've done an awesome job. So congratulations to you guys. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. You're a beautiful soul, Ben, and we love you. So <laughs> thank you, Ben. And thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you so much. And we'll, we'll see you in the next one. I can give you an Australian phrase to wrap it up if you like. Oh, well, I always wrap it up with the usual one. But come on, let's, let's see what you've got. Let's go special <laughs> this episode. So the Australian phrase to wrap it up is, see you later and stay out of yourselves. <laughs> I like it. I like how you said that as well, with authority. Helen, anything you can say to improve on that? Oh, of course I can. Always remember to keep flashing. But don't do it on Zoom calls. That's inappropriate.